Do you want to start us off? It's your turn. My turn? You didn't warn me about this. It's your turn. You just just sprung this on me. Oh, well, thanks. (laughs) Hey, guys. uh, This is Creators Chat. Uh, This time we want to be talking about style. So that elusive or scary word that gets thrown around so much that everyone's like, how do I find my style? What is my style? How do I do it? Yeah. So... Now it's your turn. Oh, you're wait. on the spot. Wait, no. You're the one who has all the answers here, remember? What? Oh, is that the deal? Yeah, that's why I got you on here. So that I could just, like, make smart-ass remarks and you're going to answer all the questions. Yeah. yeah well, that's, that's not fun. This, this is how this works. <laughs> I don't agree, Sign. I don't remember signing up to this. Oh, yeah. That was oh. part of the marriage certificate. Oh. Yeah. should have read that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you have to answer all the hard questions now. Ugh. All right. Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> um, so, this is something that quite a lot of people kind of struggle with, is the idea of um, how do I find my style? So, it's probably easier for us to talk about it in terms of art. Uh, it does apply to other professions as well. Sure. Um, but we kind of all talk about it as uh, artists. Um, so, it, the big struggle is kind of this feeling that we should be producing work that has a particular likeable style, that fits in with industry standards, that is also unique. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's quite a messy kind of minefield to be entering. Um, so, I'm probably just going to start with my opinion, which okay. is everyone worries way too much about <laughs> style. <laughs> Stop worrying so much about style. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm going to keep referring back to the same analogy in this uh, that someone once used with me and it just kind of changed the way I thought about style. So someone once compared style to handwriting to me Mm -hmm. in the sense that we all write in whatever language we're writing in. We're all kind of saying the same words, but the way that we write them is different. And everyone has kind of a go-to handwriting when they're kind of writing quickly and not paying attention. That's kind of like our style. Um, and then when we kind of have the ability to mix it up, so when we're kind of paying more attention, we can change our handwriting, mm-hmm. um, we can kind of deviate a little bit, we can mimic other people's, mm-hmm. but that our style is kind of fundamentally how we would go to do it. Right. Um, and I think that in a way, that's kind of not something you can really escape. Right. Um, you can change it, you can play with it, you can adapt it slowly over time, but largely speaking, style kind of encompasses the way that we see things, the way that we capture things. Um, and it's kind of difficult to change the way that you inherently experience things. Right. Um, so it's difficult. Um, secondly, why would you want to change that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. one thing that makes you unique. So why, why try and squash that by changing up your style? Um, I think that the best way we can kind of utilize our style is by ignoring it exists, working to be as good as we can, and then kind of being shocked when in a couple of years' time everyone comments on what a wonderful style we have and how (laughs) did you get that? How did you find and settle upon your style? Truth is, it's something you kind of are stuck with in a certain kind of way. Not in a solid way, but yeah. So that is my kind of intro to what I think of styles. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to add? I'm the only yeah. one who's done any talking to you, I know. Honey. And we need yeah, some Noah Bradley just, in I'm here. Just, I'm just here for, I don't know, my pretty face or something. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, people do worry way too much about style. And they, they think about it, I think, in the wrong way. In that style is, like you said, something you're stuck with. It's just, it's the way you tend to do things. And there's more to it than that, and we'll get into that, but it's just kind of the way you tend to paint. Uh, no matter how I paint, I will always paint the way I paint. <laughs> no, ma- no matter what, uh, I, I cannot get away from it. I'm, I'm stuck with my style, and that's the way it'll always be. And I didn't particularly try to develop it. It, it happened, and it happened somewhat naturally, it happened from doing a lot of studying of other artists. I picked up on things that I like doing and things I don't like doing. Uh, I don't necessarily paint the way that I'd like to paint, <laughs> which I think is interesting for a lot of people because they look at my style and they're like, wow, it's really great. I wish I could paint like that. And I look at my own paintings and I'm just thinking, I wish I could not paint like that. <laughs> that, would, that would be great. I'd love to paint some other way. I'd love to do a whole different style of art than I actually do. Um, but you're kind of stuck with it. You, uh, you just do it the way you do it. 
And if you just focus on making better work, odds are you're going to end up with a style. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, I find style far, far overrated. It's a bit like what we were talking about in our first chat, so uh, about fundamentals, that we tend to focus on other stuff too soon. Um, style is one of those things massively. Um, so before we've kind of nailed the fundamentals, we're worrying about what style to present things in, and that is massively like a flair choice. You can have like a really cool style that if you're not paying attention to the fundamentals would look terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it is just, that's kind of the icing on the cake. Yeah. Um, it doesn't change the flavor of the cake. Um, so basically, um, I think that people can kind of, I think people feel that they need to rely on style much more because um, they see successful artists with cool styles because mm -hmm. they see brands employing certain styles. Mm -hmm. So things like um, the top clients all certainly have like a, a style that their artists tend to go for. Sure. Um, I think that a lot of, people kind of breaking into the industry worry about how their style fits into things. Mm. Um, I personally, I mean, I, I probably don't know this as well as you, but my kind of reading on it is that style is not so important, um, that style is easier to play with than, say, your grasp at the fundamentals, mm -hmm. that once you understand good painting, you can kind of play around with style. You can push things a little bit. You know where the rules are and where the boundaries are and you can kind of push and pull and it's easier to change your style to meet a brief than it is to kind of base your portfolio around style mm -hmm. and then kind of try and f push the fundamentals later in your career. Right. Um, is that right? Is that something that you think? Yeah. Um, I think when... When a lot of people ask me, how do I come up with a better style? I don't feel like I have a style. What they should be asking is, how do I paint a little bit better? <laughs> because they tend to be the people that are, they, they frankly just need to get better at painting. Mm. Uh, their fundamental skills are lacking. And they think it's that surface level finishing of how I paint, the things I paint, and that, that, that upper end of the creation process and not all the lower end fundamental things that are happening. And that's what they need to work on. Those, those areas are just weaker in their work, and, but they're focusing on that finish because mm -hmm. that's what they see. Yeah. Uh, when you scroll through my portfolio, you see the finish. You don't see the, the fundamental knowledge that went into that. You don't see all the work, the hours that went into that. You see that finish. And so they get this idea that that stylistic flair, that ending thing, is what it's all about and that they need to work on that because they don't they don't have that they look at their work and they compare it to other people and it's it's missing something mm. but what it's really usually missing is that fundamental stuff yeah. and that that core skills um, it's very rarely the lack of style I don't know that I've ever met an artist without a style yeah. <laughs> like that's that's the thing is that your, your style isn't bland your style isn't bad, it's just you don't really have the fundamentals to make it look amazing. It's kind of underdeveloped. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all it is, yeah. for, for the most part. There, there are some things about style that I think you can develop. Mm -hmm. There are certain techniques, of course, that you can mimic from other artists that can help you kind of get a certain style, a certain brushwork, a certain methodology. Um, there's also, I think, a little bit more to style than a lot of people assume. Um, one of my old professors always would refer to style more as personal voice, mm. which I think was a good way to put it and a good way to think about it. Um, that style has far less to do with the way you move a brush because you're stuck with that. Mm -hmm. Like, like you're, you're really stuck with that yeah. one. Uh, you cannot change that one. The way you draw a line, the way you paint and move a brush, you're stuck. That's, that's just how you do it. That goes back to that handwriting thing. That mm. is just in there. Ingrained. Uh, you can change it a little bit, you can tweak it over the years, but it's always going to be you. And the other stuff that you can kind of change and you can grow and you can work on. And that's the personal voice stuff, which has to do with how you see the world, how you interpret the world, the influences you're bringing in, like you know, the movies you watch, the music you listen to, the mm -hmm. art you look at, all that sort of stuff I think comes into what your personal voice is saying. Mm. I think perhaps um, one of the struggles that people have with style is they maybe misinterpret what style really encompasses. Mm. Um, so it can be quite kind of seductive to think of style as being something that is uh, a shortcut to better paintings or um, a way to make a pretty dull painting suddenly look good. 
Um, whereas style is more actually the kind of decisions the artist has made. Mm -hmm. um, it's all of the process. It's the the way they tackled it, the order they did things in, um, why they chose one composition over another. Mm -hmm. It's not really something that is like a, a shortcut being employed. It's right. just something the artist is usually stuck with. Yeah. Actually, um, I didn't have a grasp of that until because um, I had a style crisis, of course. Um, and uh, I was kind of trying to force my style to be more like yours. Um, and I really would like to work for clients like um, Wizard of the Coast one day, and I'm trying to push my style to be more like a, like a magic artist. Um, and I'm kind of asking, you know, how should I do this? How should I push my style to be more employable? And um, it was you kind of telling me that you didn't like your own style, which kind of made me drop everything and go, what? <laughs> You've got like a great career mm. and a huge fan base and you are tried and tested a good artist. Like, why don't you like your style? <laughs> like, and also, if you don't like your style, why don't you change it? And I was kind of having all these thoughts thinking like, that makes no sense. That's not how I understood style. I mm. kind of thought it was like, we all see the world the same way. We all see the same thing. Um, we go to paint it and then you like switch the style, switch in your head and yeah. you kind of like mix it up and go crazy and a magic painting appears and it's um, not bad at all. It's a much more kind of dull thing in real life. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of like, it's not that cool. Um, and actually from speaking to most artists, I don't, in fact, I don't think I've ever had a conversation with an artist who's been like, I've got a great style. I really like style. Style's a good thing that I've nailed. Yeah. It's just, everyone's kind of like, oh, I don't really like the way I paint. I wish yeah. I painted like so-and-so. And yeah. I really can't think of anyone who yeah. solidly loves their style. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of something we carry with us. And I yeah. think that we could do with thinking about it less. Yeah. Um, I've certainly improved a lot since I stopped thinking about my style. Yeah. Um, I, I think we touched on this again in the first week about me and my lines, mm -hmm. that I was not using lines because I felt like um, like the style that I wanted to achieve was more realistic than line work would call mm. for. Uh, so I just never touched lines. Mm -hmm. uh, even though my brain really wanted me to use lines, that's how I thought mm -hmm. about things. I was kind of smothering that in pursuit of style. Um, and when I kind of let go of the pressure I was putting on myself with that and just said, you know, I don't care what this looks like, I'm just going to paint it. Yeah. Uh, I actually produced much better paintings. I could see myself kind of shining through them. In mm. a, like I could relate to the paintings better than when I was forcing myself to do a different style. I felt yeah. prouder of the work I was producing. Yeah. Um, and sure, there's kind of a vulnerability in that and kind of, like for me, admitting that I liked using lines was almost a bit like a um, a cop-out. It felt like I was cheating. And so it was almost a bit embarrassing the first time I showed a painting that had lines in it because it wasn't the style I was trying to achieve, but I did it mm. and it felt like cheating. And I kind of posted it, was a bit embarrassed and it got the best reception of the stuff I'd done so <laughs> far and uh, sure. suddenly realized that this great big elusive struggle with style that I was having in my head was in my head that yeah. it wasn't something that was projecting outside yeah. and that you know different styles there isn't a good style and a bad style there is yeah. equal validity to like all sorts of kooky styles out yeah. there um, and it's not a yes no answer there are different times when different styles are needed um, so the best thing you can really do is just paint the way you yes. <laughs> paint um, and it sounds a bit kind of corny like uh, you know be yourself but if that's all that we've got that sets us apart, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. everyone's trying to do good at the fundamentals. Everyone's yeah. trying to paint profound paintings and work for great clients. Mm. So all that you can do that no one else has done before you is be you. Mm. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that then in like five years time, people start going, like, how did you, how did you stumble across this? You know, it's so profound. How did yeah. you find your style? Yeah. It's not so much finding your style as getting comfortable with it and yeah. exploiting it and yeah. not letting it kind of be a cage, yeah. kind of finding ways to play with it in the ways that other people don't. Yeah. And, and, I, and I do think you should develop it. And I think you develop it by having interest outside of just mm, art. This is true. Uh, this is something I see people mess up with on all the time is they get into art and they get really consumed with art and that's all they do all day long they think about art they talk about art they hang out with artists and they just are just complete into the art world yeah. 
and then they forget about all their other hobbies and stuff mm -hmm. and all their other interests or they don't have them to begin with and then they end up just not knowing what to paint they end up making these paintings that are really really dull they're yep. just kind of lifeless because you can tell they're just interested in nothing but painting which yeah. painting is a great pursuit mm -hmm. i like painting but if you want to have personal voice if you want to have something to say you have to have something to say you have to yeah. develop something to say you have to have opinions about the world opinions about other things uh, you know knowledge about mm. other fields uh, and I think that's I think that's a really important thing uh, again it's not looking at just the surface level you can try to imitate somebody's surface level but if you do that you're not going to get the deep underlying meaning behind all that stuff yeah. Um, I've seen people that try to be knockoffs of me even, mm -hmm. and they try to imitate the subject matter, they try to imitate the painting style, the lighting techniques, the compositions, all that sort of stuff, but it ends up falling flat. Mm -hmm. Not because it's an imitation, not because they're bad painters, but because I have mm -hmm. that makes my art what it is. Yep. They don't, you know do all the research that I do, they don't do all the reading that I do, they haven't seen all the movies that I've seen, they haven't done all the certain particular studies I've done. Uh, they, they're lacking all of that stuff that's behind the scenes, and because of that, the art just doesn't work quite as well. Yeah. There's so much content in our lives that helps us. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people can worry that... Um, their lives aren't interesting enough to base mm. a good career on. That you know they don't have the profound, deep experiences that other people have had. They haven't been able to travel the world. Right. And um, I just want to say on the record that as much as I loved traveling with you, it didn't like it didn't massively change. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't change my style. You mean you're not enlightened now? I, I didn't find myself. Come on, <laughs> we went to Bali. Didn't even find yourself. I'm sorry. That's such a letdown. Come on, um, that's what you do there. That's what everyone does. It is. I just go and find myself in the rice fields yeah. and go meditate. Maybe you should have gotten that top knot. That would have should. solved it. I've still got my barley anklet on. You do. But, but I, I stopped the top meditation. Knot, I think that brings all the brain waves like just into the right them. alignment with yeah your energy. <laughs> Are we being terrible right now? <laughs> I hope so. I hope we offend somebody. Oh no. I'm sorry guys. I don't mean to be judgy. Mm. Um, but... It's something that I always used to think that um, I wasn't an interesting enough person because I hadn't had the opportunity to travel and stuff mm. like that. Um, but I'm pretty much a very similar person besides having more reference photos. Sure. Um, I don't think, I don't know, I don't think it profoundly changed me. There will no. be experiences that I had gained that I can add to my repertoire. Mm -hmm. But no matter what we were doing, there would have been something I was doing that sure. would have affected my personal voice. It doesn't matter if we were in Bali or sitting at home watching TV. Whatever yeah. it was that we were doing was some kind of absorbing something that's right. going to influence our work. Yeah. Um, I think that people are too quick to shun their own journeys. Sure. They will kind of idolize other people's journeys and say, you know, I haven't haven't had the opportunities that person has, I haven't suffered the way that person has, I haven't seen the things that that person has. Um, when actually there are so many things in everyone's lives that someone will go, oh my God, really? That's interesting. I didn't know that happened. How did you go? Right. Like, there's so many things that people can say. Yeah. Everyone experiences things differently. Everyone has different struggles and triumphs and everyone's got something different to say. Uh, so I think that we could kind of turn inwards a little bit and look to our own experiences and... Uh, I used to worry that my style was too immature, so mm. I kind of found myself wanting to paint um, lots of pretty girls and happy scenes, and I've got my squirrel painting, and I've got everything's all bright colours, and mm. um, I was kind of annoyed at myself because I couldn't do the super gritty, grungy kind of stuff that other mm. people do, and I don't have... Um, I don't have a lot of super moody things I want to paint about um, mm. because my journey hasn't been a super moody journey mm. uh, and I've always felt like I suck as an artist because I don't have a really deep moody message for people right. <laughs> uh, like all the artists I admire have something really deep and sometimes traumatic and full of suffering that they sure. want to share with the world like a really profound strong message mm. and I've kind of felt a bit like a phony because the stuff I paint I'm just like well I just I just like I like pretty things yeah. <laughs> I like painting leaves and animals and happy women and mm. um, that kind of made me feel like I had to force a more kind of masculine, gritty, angry style mm. um, when actually 
there's people who look at my happier artwork and say they really connected with it and mm. they like my style and they and I'm kind of there's something for everybody there is place for sure. everybody in their journey and the message they have um, and while other people are doing different things that sometimes is all it is different it doesn't mean better or worse right. or more valid less valid it's just different um, mm. and I think we there is far more to be gained from exploiting our own experiences uh, as much as we can and not trying to kind of gather up other people's experiences and styles and right. mimicking them as best we can. Because um, all we can do then is kind of be worse knockoffs. If we start trying to climb the same ladders as other people, we'll just be a few rungs down. Yeah. You kind of stick up your own ladder and get a head start. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly people will be looking at you and wondering how you did it. Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. So do you feel like you have a style now? Uh, I feel like it's kind of stuck with me. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, this is something that I'm starting to accept. Uh, I think we first... I was convinced I didn't have a style. Um, yes. But then lately there was that... Uh, what was it? Uh, artist versus art mm. meme, I think, where you put your face in the middle and yeah, then eight yeah. pieces of your artwork around the outside. Uh, and I did that, and I was like, yeah, cool. And, uh, and I think you came over and you are like, oh, I think someone's got a style. And you kind of said it as a bit of a... Uh, a joke but for me I was like wait I've got a style wait where <laughs> where is that um I'm starting to see it and that's yeah. actually quite interesting is I think people don't see their own styles as well mm, as other people no. see them so for me I feel like I've got a right mismatch of a portfolio I've got stuff mm. all over the place sure. um but to other people it's easier to see the kind mm. of unifying features of it um so yeah I'm starting to accept I have a style uh, <laughs> and I'm actually kind of I kind of like it because it feels authentic now because I'm not pushing it I'm mm. not trying to have anyone else's style and I'm just kind of having fun with my own voice yeah. um, which is its own kind of liberating it can feel a bit like you're going off the beaten path um, mm. and that you're going to hit the mark, like miss the mark and no one's going to understand what you're doing or why you're doing it um, or like where's the line between style and just bad choices sure. and things like that um, but actually I think when you do start doing that people kind of they can tell that you're painting more honestly yeah. uh, I enjoy painting more when I'm just kind of letting my own style shine through um, let's just embrace it <laughs> it's, it's not leaving you <laughs> No, it's not. Yeah. I do think it is worth noting that so on one side, people are so focused on style and think it's this glorified thing that they want to go after. The other people seem to use it as an excuse, ah. as a cop-out oh, yes. to working harder. So they're notorious, yeah. that's just my style. Yes, <laughs> which, oh dear God, it's never just your style. Yeah. Anytime anyone's ever said that, it's a bad thing. Yeah. If that's your response to a critique, stop that. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. If you've ever said that, that's terrible. Unless you're joking, you're not allowed to say that. Yeah. So, um, like, <laughs> there will be times when someone will comment on um, on something that you've done, mm. and you'll be like, um, you'll kind of think to yourself, but I, I like that about it. I did that on purpose. And the temptation is to say, that's just my style. I, right. I know that. Like, um, So, actually, one with, like, uh, that I do, noses. Yep. Um, I always paint noses tiny and mm -hmm. honestly I think that's kind of bent, buried in my teenage anime roots um, they are creepy tiny hey leave my they, noses alone they are Michael Jackson noses <laughs> Little. they are very small <laughs> they're cute button noses no, honey no, I no, keep no, telling no. you this. they are creepy plastic surgery <laughs> noses hey yes they get way too tiny so yeah we have this disagreement about my noses yes um, and every time Noah comes over and says nose is too small there's like this compulsion in me that wants to say that's just my style because I am like I like painting little noses sure um, he's not saying your enjoyment of painting small noses is wrong he's saying that's not a small nose that's a micro nose <laughs> <laughs> nobody can have a nose that small yeah that's like there's bones in there honey it's yeah. just not what noses look like so if someone is kind of pulling you up on something yeah. um it's likely not a style choice they're pulling you up on. Unless it's like a, a client who is saying that the style doesn't fit their brief. Right. That's a little different. But this is more just if you're getting like a, a portfolio critique or something like that. Uh, and someone says, you know, um, 
your perspective is off or uh, the colors don't work yeah. and you feel tempted to say that's just my style they unless the person is just being a bit of a an idiot <laughs> nice way of putting it thank you i just kind of like back there a little bit uh some people do give bad critiques it's worth sure. remembering most um there's plenty of bad critiques out there um even if you think the guy's just being an idiot um don't say that's just my style because that's a sure way to like send the conversation downhill mm. um but just kind of bear in mind that if someone is giving you advice um on something saying that something is too whatever it's likely coming from more a fundamentals point than a style mm. point yeah um Take a look and see the reasons for saying that. Yeah. If they say that your perspective is off, but you thought in your head, you know, I was going for a cool kind of like ambiguous perspective, or, you know, kind of fantasy or mm. like, you know, if there's something you've done on purpose mm. that someone has said, don't agree with that. Sure. Um, just don't kind of jump to the conclusion that they're wrong and they just don't yeah. understand your style. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of a bit of a minefield. It's a bit elusive, but... Uh, I just generally say as a rule of thumb, if someone critiques your work, try not to argue. No. Uh, even, I mean, I've, I've received critiques and been kind of annoyed because I'm like, that's nonsense. Yeah. And there's been times where, like, you and I have kind of disagreed on something, like mm -hmm. noses. Sure, um, mostly noses. Mostly noses. <laughs> um, or like, um, another style one we had lately, in my um, To Fall For An Angel painting, I really tightly rendered the figures. Mm. Um, which I can't help. That's my style. I like tightly rendering figures as much cool. as I beat myself up for it. I cannot help tightly rendering figures. I don't know figures. why you beat yourself up. Oh, because everyone does really nice. Like, oh, not everyone. Uh... Plenty of people do nicely, <laughs> tightly rendered figures. This is true. Um, so I've kind of started making... Sorry, I'm creaking the sofa like mad. Um, okay. I've started making peace with the tightly rendered figures. Um, but then tried to push, push the kind of simplified, thick... Uh, efficient style in the background mm. because I've also received the critique that I'm too tight mm. so I'm kind of trying to loosen up and not be too literal um, I took my piece to you feeling very proud of my loose background and you were like you've scribbled the background <laughs> why have you scribbled the background and I'm like you know because everyone's told me that I need to paint the background less tightly need to be more loose um, and you were saying no, it doesn't work well in this piece because you've so tightly rendered the figures. So, you know, that needs to be more balanced. And inside, I'm like, that just disagrees with everything everyone's ever told me. And I'm kind of not agreeing with the critique. Um, and again, I've got the thing rising up in me where I'm tempted to say, that's just my style. I did that on purpose. I didn't want to over-render the background. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of went away and looked at it and thought about why you'd have said that. And I'm like, well, I don't think he just has like a vendetta against me. I don't think he wants me to be any good. You never know. <laughs> he just love it when I spend uh, 20 unnecessary um, hours painfully rendering a background. Yes. He loves seeing me miserable. Yes. You know um, how much I love painting backgrounds. That was secretly my plan. <laughs> so, did it work? Oh, God. I spent days <laughs> and I was miserable. But I did it. Yeah. And I was glad when I did. Oh, it really? Was, yeah. Sh sh I'm so surprised. Stop being so smug. <laughs> I was humble and yes. I did it yes, and did. I was grateful I did. Mm -hmm. It paid off. Yeah. Um, so sometimes when people kind of give you advice that seems like off par, yeah. um, it can just be because you spent so long staring at it and it's your baby and yeah. um, there's that whole kind of uncanny valley kind of thing and where you've just kind of been staring at something for 40 hours and you're familiar with it mm. and you don't see its faults and you just kind of, you know, someone points out that something's wrong. I do it with faces all the time. That's mm. why I do tiny noses. Right. Because I've been staring at that little tiny nose for 20 hours uh, to the point where it looks like a family member. You know, I mm. recognize that face intimately, yeah. point it out of a crowd. So I can't see that it's weird. Sure. Uh, it's only when I get someone else to do a, like if you do a paint over for me and then I spend two days away from it, come back, disable the paint over layer and I'm like, oh my Lord, <laughs> what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> um, so just kind of having a bit of humility and um, yeah. just accepting that if someone's giving you advice, it's probably not your personal style. It could be. It could be. It is sometimes. Like sometimes I've gotten critique and been like, no, actually that was a very good decision. Mm. And I'm doing that. Yep. Uh, other times though, it's it's often just a actually good critique, particularly when people are like, oh, your shadows are too black. And people are like, no, it's my style. 
Yeah. It's my style to have really, really dark, contrasty black shadows. I'm like, no, it's not. You just <laughs> got really lazy and didn't want to paint any shadows. That's yeah. what actually happened there. Yeah. So. And um, anatomy is another one. Where oh, yeah. You should not be claiming to have a particular style until you know anatomy inside out. Yeah. Anatomy is a really difficult one because it's you can't get away with skimping on the rules. Um, yeah. We're too familiar with human bodies. They're too uniform a shape. Yeah. Even in all our kind of variety. Whereas rocks, like, they're gazillion different shapes. Yes. Human bodies follow basic rules. They tend to. Um, there can be deviation, but on the whole, our recognition of a human body is kind of fairly uniform. Um, and if we skip over really, like, standard anatomy and stylize too soon, we just end up kind of making creepy non-humans. Um, and that's kind of the classic one where you hear that's just my style, you know, yeah. where you've got, um, you know, it's kind of screams to mind like overly booby women <laughs> with, with micro waists and yes. like maxi hips. Yes. Um, and you kind of say, oh, like they're doing some kind of broken back posture. Oh, yes. um, and the temptation is to say, that's just my style. Mm. Uh, if someone says, you know, that's not realistic. And they go, yeah, I know, it's not my style. I'm going for a cartoony look. You know, I'm hyper, mm. hyper-sexualizing, whatever. Yeah. But the critique still stands. <laughs> yes. That's not how it works. Yeah. Uh, to say that that's just your style is kind of depriving yourself of an opportunity to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have a cartoon style that is, like, fundamentally good. Yeah. Uh, you can understand anatomy and then morph it in whatever way you want to, but yeah. remain true to the kind of fundamentals of it Mm. Um, and you can also just completely ignore that and then just end up making kind of noodle people Um, (laughs) don't 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 draw noodle people Um, so you know some people especially kind of in the field of um, cartoons and stuff like that will skip out on really realistic um, really classical training because Mm. that's not what they're going for they don't want to do highly rendered charcoal drawings of figures they want to do really exaggerated cartoony people. Yeah. And that's great. Um, but I think everyone should do a stint of classical training if they want to get into something like that because it gives you an understanding of form, it gives you an understanding of how the body works, um, which then means you can manipulate it more convincingly because mm. you understand what it is you're trying to capture mm. and what it is you're trying to caricaturize. Right. Um, whereas otherwise you kind of end up mi- mimicking the style of somebody... Um, it's like trying to copy the way someone writes without knowing what language they're using or what letters mm. they're like. If I try to ca- copy a Japanese script, I can't speak Japanese, I can't read Japanese, but I could probably just about get by copying the script of someone's Japanese if someone gave me a scroll and I could kind of copy it. Um, but then you give me a piece of paper and go, now write your own Japanese, and I'm going to go. <laughs> and do a really offensive oh, yes. impression of what yes. I think Japanese is. Yeah, it's yes. kind of the same sort of way. If we are copying artists we admire mm. without understanding how to do the basics, when we then go to do our own stuff, we're going to mangle all kinds of things. Um, and this can kind of happen at all levels. I'm talking about this from like a newbie perspective of someone who's not tried drawing the human body mm. and then tries drawing it from other people's styles. Mm. This can kind of filter into every level. So yeah. it can happen like when you're a professional and rather than kind of studying something and you know really researching it we will mm. shortcut by looking at someone else's art mm. so say um painting wings mm. that's something that a lot of people fall into um and i kind of fell victim to it myself the other day i got pulled up on it for, uh, for it on reddit and mm. my painting that i hadn't got the anatomy right of the wings right. despite spending i think i spent at least an hour scrolling through different images of different bird wings trying to figure out exactly how that anatomy worked right. uh, i still fell short sure um so the temptation is to kind of skip things like that and mm. just kind of look at the way i'm like oh that artist is a really good pair of wings one time i'm just going to copy how they did that yeah. That's how an obvious lack of understanding creeps through yep. and someone goes, you didn't understand the anatomy, you just copied somebody else's attempt at that. Um, so no matter what your style is, you shouldn't be neglecting the kind of fundamentals of yeah. study and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's me all kind of styled out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of much more to say about style. There's, there's one more thing oh, yeah? I did want to talk about. Yeah, go there's for one it. more. Um, there are some clients that if you want to work for, you have to have their okay, style. Yeah. 
that's that that's very true. Um, Magic is actually pretty liberal about their style. Yeah. Uh, some people give them a hard time for like, oh, all Magic art looks the same. <laughs> no, it just all looks good. Yeah, th <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. It's it's all good. Yeah. Uh, go figure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Actually, Magic is pretty loose about the kind of styles they accept. Yeah. They're they're increasingly accepting more and more different styles and yeah. pushing their artists in different directions and it's really exciting to see. Nice. Uh, they're they're quite nice about it. So people that are worried like, oh my style doesn't fit magic and I'm like, do you do art? <laughs> then then it might. Do you do uh, the fundamentals? <laughs> yeah, then sure. Yeah. Um, so but there are other clients like say uh, Riot or Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, or Valve, and they they can often have very specific styles. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're going to go work on the next Uncharted game, say, you're going to have a photorealistic style. Yeah. You're that's what they're going to do. They're going to do hyper realism. Mm. If you go to work on Blizzard, you're going to do hyper stylized. Yeah. If you try to come in there and do like photo real stuff. Uh, you're going to get sent to the cinematics team <laughs> yes. and then they're going to fix your proportions to be like all crazy and stuff and have giant like shoulder pads and God stuff. God loves <laughs> Uh Everyone loves giant cauldrons. Um, so there are cases of that where you can, as an artist, uh, attempting to be more professional, adjust your that surface level style to accommodate different companies. Because yeah. like Blizzard is not gonna hire you unless you look like Blizzard. Yeah. There, are, there are thousands of artists that want to work for Blizzard and they look just like Blizzard's work already and so those are who they're probably gonna hire. Yeah. Uh, they're not gonna come to my door and hire me because <laughs> I look nothing like Blizzard's work. Yeah. And that's fine, I understand that. And I know I can't, I can't stylize things like that. It would mm. take a lot of effort for me to go back and change that surface level of how I even approach images to yeah. do something that would accommodate them. Yeah. And I think it's great that companies get to do that. It makes for a very cohesive product that people recognize. You can just look at one of those paintings and know it's from there. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very easy to recognize. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. But for your own style and your own work, I think that's a very different territory mm. um, than those professional concerns. Yeah. Well, one of the things, the nice things about style is that if you have strong fundamental styles, is when, like style is one of the easier things to kind of play with. Mm. Um, so if you have your portfolio and you know that you're at a professional level and a hireable level and you think, I would really like to work for Blizzard, mm. um, it, that's one of the easier things to change later down the road and you can keep your own style whilst kind of working to somebody else's specification. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to change who you are as an artist, you can just kind of tailor what you're doing a little bit. Um, and I think that that works <coughs> kind of... Uh, sorry, I lost my thread completely. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. It's like something just, just like entered my brain. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Mm. I lost my thread. I've just gone fast forward. It's okay. Maybe it's the lights. Maybe it is. They're pretty hot. Maybe really I just bright. need to sleep. Yeah, that too. too. I've been writing all day. Yeah, so I'm just not also like, yeah, I, yeah. So I'm just like in my fantasy world at the moment. Yeah, this yeah. this is go, not my reality. You go, you go have fun. Yeah, <laughs> just returning. But yeah, the, 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 the surface level is easy to change once you have those. Because there's, uh, there's a magic artist, Eric, Eric Deschamps. Mm. And he does magic art that everyone recognizes, very good stuff. And then people don't realize it, but he also does kids' books and like young I adult didn't know that. stuff. That's like, awesome. Yeah, he does beautiful like young adult stuff yeah. that, you know, looks great. But the, yeah, so the style of like, ooh, fantasy and crazy stuff mm -hmm. and like scary creatures and all that, it's. Oh, I just remember what I was going to say. Oh, I've returned, yeah. I'm back in the room. Oh, right, so, you're back. Yes. How was the fantasy world? Is <laughs> so it nice, nice there? So nice. That's good. <laughs> it's nice there. Uh, so, um, style is kind of something that people will um, worry about whether they're going to be horrible or not when they should really be working on the style that they enjoy the most um, and then kind of tailoring the style. So what I'm getting at is that people will think that their style is important to getting them hired. Mm. So before they've kind of fully got to a professional level, they're thinking already of the styles that they're aspiring to, to get hired by the most people. Um, when you actually get there, 
getting hired by those people for your different styles is kind of um, not the best way to go about it. You should be doing the work that you find most fulfilling, mm. that makes you produce your best work, and mm. then kind of working for the people that want that sort of thing. Yeah not pushing your art down a road that you don't enjoy mm. in an attempt to get those high label names because it could just be that those high label names are not the kind of people you want to really work for it might mm. make you miserable sure um if you stay true to your kind of authentic voice mm. and pursue what you actually enjoy and the kind of things you really want to be putting out there mm. it will attract the kind of work that you want to be doing mm. um i remember you saying that um, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but you know, if you want to be painting dogs, don't paint people. If you want yeah. to be painting landscapes, don't yeah. paint surreal kind yeah. of still lives, you know. Yeah, don't show the work you don't want to get paid to do. Exactly. Show the work you want to get paid to do. Yeah, and it can be tempting to think that you need to be tailoring your style early on in your journey to right. get, be seen by these people. Yeah. Um, that's a really good way to make yourself miserable yeah. and trap yourself into the kind of work you don't want to be doing, sure. you know. Um, learning is the time to be discovering what you actually enjoy doing and what speaks yeah. to you most and when you're really good that's when you start looking at what clients suit the kind of work you like doing yeah. i would say that picking your clients before you know what it is you want to do is a dangerous road that yeah can kind of leave you feeling trapped without many options yeah it it can certainly lead you down a road that does kind of encourage you to ignore the fundamentals to a degree because you're so focused on copying that style yeah. that um, you miss out on learning some of the things you really should be focusing on. Yeah. And it's worth noting that um, quite often our personal um, tastes and things don't always correlate with what we paint. So it can be kind of startling to see that although uh, I enjoy consuming gritty, grungy, moody images mm -hmm. I just don't enjoy painting them at all really don't um, right. and I could sit there looking all day at these gorgeous like gestural portraits with mm -hmm. minimal brush strokes and and I just I try doing it and it makes me miserable yeah. um, and I don't like consuming work like mine um, mm. it just doesn't speak to me yeah. but that's the way I express myself yeah. um, so even if you really love fantasy yeah. Uh, you love reading everything fantasy, playing everything fantasy, you might find that you just don't enjoy painting fantasy oh, yeah. and you want to work in something completely different, editorials or uh, yeah. sci-fi or yeah. just a completely... It doesn't mean that if you sit down and paint and you're not enjoying it, it doesn't mean that you're doomed. It just really means that it's not quite complete. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't actually... I paint a lot of fantasy mm -hmm. and I don't actually consume a lot of fantasy. I don't tend to read too much fantasy. Mm. I don't tend to watch too many fantasy movies. Yeah. It's just not really my thing. I watch way more sci-fi than I ever have fantasy. Yeah. And I hate painting like sci-fi. Yep. Like straight up sci-fi with like cool spaceships and mm -hmm. or like dark gritty sci-fi like Blade Runner or something. Hate doing all of that. Just mm -hmm. not my thing. Don't like painting it. Love consuming it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm the same with, I love, um, Something I really love doing is uh, like loving, I love seeing landscapes that have really heavy architectural stuff in them. So yeah. when someone has rendered like a city or something and you're just looking at it like, wow, I could get lost in that. Yeah. Like it must have taken like a hundred hours to do something like that. Yeah. And I could never do that. Like I just don't like it. I, yeah. I don't like landscapes. I don't like painting cities. Um, I just enjoy painting people, but I don't actually that much enjoy consuming images of people. I kind mm. of find... I worry that my work isn't exciting because I don't find character art as exciting. Um, mm. So it's kind of interesting that like mismatch, that mm. non-alignment between what we personally enjoy and what we yeah. um, enjoy doing kind of ourselves. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be in harmony. <laughs> no, it, yeah. it very rarely is. Mm. It's very rare that the sort of work that you like looking at is the sort of work you do. Mm. Uh, like I don't, I don't mind the work I do. <laughs> But at the same time, I'd much rather look at like something hyper stylized, mm. like flat and graphic work yeah. than I ever would like my realistic rendered stuff. Like I find it kind of dull, yeah. uh, which is kind of sad at first, but then you realize it's just kind of the way it is yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. And I do get to communicate what I get to, what I want to communicate with my work. Mm. And that's why I make work the way I do. Yeah. And uh, also, I just enjoy working that way the best. So.
Yeah. I guess that's what style is. I think so. I think we've kind of I actually talked about that longer than I expected we would. Yeah, I knew in my we kind of <laughs> in my little intro there, where I was like, I felt like I said everything within yeah, one it's like, minute. Yeah, and I was we're like, done. Oh, yeah, now it's over to you now because yeah. I can't think of anything else yeah, to say. But I just said everything. Two minutes yeah. done. Yeah, I feel like we milked that pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Go us. There's a lot to say about it. There is. It's, it is a it is a thing to think about. Yeah. People do worry about it too much, but For it sure. is it is certainly a thing that's worth thinking about. Definitely. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about style or anything, feel free to do some over. Um, if you've got anything to add, let us know. But yeah. I think that was good. I think so. Cool. I think that's all from us. All right. Alrighty. Catch you guys later. See ya.